Hi, my name is Mike and I'm doing a reflection today on the line from our carol with the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. I'm sure we've all heard of the town of Bethlehem, even if the only thing we know about it is it's the birthplace of Jesus. It's a town in the West Bank and its main industry is tourism. Um, I read when I was looking up facts about Bethlehem that the most commonly bought souvenir uh, by tourists visiting that town is an olive wood carving. But Bethlehem was a town in Jesus' day and it was a town for centuries before that. Uh, In fact, it was the city that King David uh, came from. And when the wise men came to visit the child Jesus, they went to Jerusalem and they asked the authorities there, where is this special king who's just been born? And the scribes who studied the Hebrew scriptures told them that it was prophesied that when the Messiah was born, he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. That's the verse I want to read for you today. It's from the prophecy of Micah, and if you want to look it up, it's Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Micah was relaying a message from God when he made that prophecy. So it's God who is speaking, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel. And God's people took this as a message about the Messiah, the special king that God had promised, who would come and rule with justice and peace, according to God's loving will for all people. Jesus wasn't a response to God's plan going wrong. Jesus is God's plan and always has been. And that's one of the reasons, I guess, why Micah, speaking with words from God, said, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Some people think that's a reference to King David, who was Jesus' ancestor. Some people think it's a reference to Adam, the idea that God's Messiah, God's Christ, would do the job that Adam and Eve were supposed to do, ruling with justice and peace according to God's loving will. You could read that as suggesting that the Messiah, that Jesus, is more than just a human being, that he exists from before all time. In fact, one of the prophecies that Jesus was very fond of quoting, uh, we have lots of instances in the Gospel books of Jesus referring to it, is the prophecy of Daniel, where he talked about the Son of Man, a mysterious human being who is put in the place of God, who is given the worship that is due only to God. And Jesus claimed to be that son of man, that human being who somehow is God. This is God's plan. It always has been that God himself should become human in the person of Jesus Christ. He is God. He was born. He was conceived as a human being. He was born as a human being. He lived as a human being. He died as a human being. And as a human being, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he lives today to pray for us in the presence of his heavenly Father. It's all a bit cosmic, but it's also rooted in a real place, the town of Bethlehem, in a real time, sometime 
uh, a little over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in reality, in history, and he was born to fulfil God's plan. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem, in fulfilment of the prophecy of Micah. Jesus' life and death and resurrection were all prophesied. They were all part of God's plan. And God has a plan for you as well. God has a plan for me. God has a plan to work everything to the good of those who love him and trust in him. And Jesus is central to that plan. Jesus is God coming to fulfil his plan. And his birth in Bethlehem was an important step. That's why we celebrate every Christmas. His birth in Bethlehem was probably one of the most important things that's ever happened to fulfil that plan. But God's plan involves you. God's plan involves me. He has a role for us to play. And he will make everything turn out according to his loving will. It's great to be on board with that plan. So I'm just going to say a prayer now. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say the words as they come to me. So I'm sorry if it sounds a bit clumsy, but God knows what we mean when we pray. God knows what we should be praying about, even if we forget things or use the wrong words. So I'm quite happy to just pray off the cuff, as it were. And if you're happy to endorse my prayer, please do um, say Amen at the end. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Christmas season. Thank you for this season of peace, this opportunity to pray for peace and to remember that your will for the world is the just and peaceful rule of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I want to pray that as Christmas is fast approaching, we may know your peace. We may know your Son. And I want to pray that this will be, for each one of us, the best Christmas yet. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.